Hello, dear church friends and family. This is Pastor Mark coming to you with a special edition of our Year in Reading the Bible project. This is an overview of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. This is kind of like a supplemental video because there are some details that I may mention here that don't go with any one particular chapter that we'll be reading throughout the month, but wanted you to have some background information so that you can understand and make the most of your reading of the book of Genesis. Genesis, as you probably know, is the first book of the Bible, and its name, Genesis, means beginning or origin. So you can imagine it's a very good place to start, and it's very logical that it's at the beginning of the Bible. This book, tradition holds, and we believe that it was written by Moses, the great prophet of the Old Testament. In fact, it's called the first book of Moses. Moses wrote what's called the Pentateuch, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and Genesis is the first of those. The book of Genesis is so foundational to our faith because as people, not even just as Christians, but general people have to answer three main questions in their life. Where do I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? The book of Genesis is so central to our belief as Christians as to where we came from. We came from the very hand of God, as we will find in chapter 1. This is so crucial for our understanding, has heavy implications for why we are here and therefore where we are going. So our biblical experience is so much richer for having the book of Genesis in it. It was written around 1500 BC before Christ came, likely written while the Israelites were still enslaved. Moses probably didn't want the Israelites to lose their identity. Remember, they had been some centuries in bondage. They were forgetting about God, and Moses wanted to make sure that they remembered where they came from and the patriarchs, the calling of Abraham, and other very significant things we find in the book of Genesis. It's possible that this was written during Moses' time in Midian. We know that he had about 40 years there, tending sheep and uh, starting his family there with uh, Jethro's daughter. And it's likely that he wanted to commit to paper the things that he had been taught in his childhood. You may remember that his Jewish mother taught him, even though he was being brought up in the king's court of the Pharaoh uh, there in Egypt. So several big concepts that we will see in the book of Genesis. First of all, the stories of creation and the flood, hugely important to our understanding of the world as it originally was intended to be, and then what happened with sin, and then a great catastrophe, a judgment of God, that brings us to the world where we see it today. We also see the Tower of Babel, which explains the diverse languages we see around the world. And then we get the stories of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The last major story in the book of Genesis is the beloved story of Joseph, takes over 10 chapters there toward the end. And I pray that you will find as we read through this together that the book of Genesis is a fascinating book. It's interesting, it's entertaining, it's chock full of stories, and those stories are full of meaning. This is an account of God's first interactions with people. And if you imagine that the Israelites basically only had the book of Genesis with them as they went out into the wilderness, it might have been their basic textbook for understanding who they were. And it still does a lot of that for us today. So as we read through these chapters, I want to encourage you to put yourself in the shoes of the characters. As we read about Adam and Eve, imagine that you are Adam or Eve. How would you be feeling about the splendid, magnificent garden you were placed in and woke up in? How would you feel when you opened the door to sin and then all the tragedies that came afterwards? Imagine when we get to the story of Noah, imagine that you are in Noah's difficult place, building for over a hundred years and preaching for people to repent and come into the ark, and nobody does except your own family. Consider Abraham. Put yourself in the shoes of Abraham. A voice comes to you and says, Abraham, I want you to leave your father's house and go where exactly? I don't know, but God said he would show as I go. What amazing faith that is that Abraham stepped out in. And of course, Joseph. Many of us had sibling rivalries when we were kids, but I doubt any of you got sold into slavery and were all alone in a strange land, strange language, strange food, strange religion, but Joseph held firm. Dear friends, I am excited to go on this journey with you, and I pray that we will do it together. 
some things that could possibly enhance your journey through the book of Genesis is you could actually journal about these things. You could give it a first person point of view. You could journal your thoughts and your imaginations. When I was a Bible teacher at Adventist Academy, often I would give my students time in class to journal their thoughts and their perspectives. And if that's something that enhances your own reflections on it and your communication with God, reflecting on his word, I definitely want to encourage you to do that. The more attention we give the stories in Genesis, the more it will come alive to us. So yes, we can skim the chapter quickly and say, okay, I read my chapter for the day, but I really want to invite you to pause and ponder. And of course, ask daily, what do you have for me, Lord? Holy Spirit, please enlighten me to the lesson that you would have me learn so that I don't have to fall into the same pitfalls as uh, Cain did or as Jacob did or you know, other characters uh, throughout the book of Genesis. God bless you. I look forward to continuing on this journey together. God bless you all.